Hi everyone, thanks for joining. I'm JJ Walsh. I run a small business called the Inbound Ambassador and do a talk show series live streamed every weekday from Japan called Seeking Sustainability Live. This is the first of many follow up series bonus material from the interviews that I do in the series to be able to follow up with them in person. You can find more information about me, my blog, and other work on other social media linked from my page, inboundambassador.com. Please also subscribe, like, and share to this channel. And if you'd like to financially support the work that I'm doing, you can find that on my Patreon, buymeacoffee, or coffee.com. I'm also open to ideas for a collaboration. And other ideas, so please feel free to reach out. This video is a follow up with Mike Barr, who lives in Kyoto and has renovated a few different old style traditional Japanese houses, machiya, into guest houses or his own home, or for other reasons.、Um, Mike says for many years they either had a kid or a new remodel project in his family. When I visited him at his remodeled Machia in Kyoto at the beginning of November 2020, he told me all about how they remodeled this beautiful building into a guest house. I also had the chance to stay at a newly built building which used a lot of traditional wood and Japanese themes and styles to make a very comfortable guest house for international travelers. Is so, this is the original kind of patchwork ceiling and then the little, little carved bits. But this front part was a, was a factory of some kind. Like, a, I think they made miso here. So, it was, all,、uh, it was all just a cavernous kind of concrete thing with the storage room in the back, which is where this tatami room concept came from. That was a raised storage room. And then there was a storage section that went right in the back where the little garden is.、Um, That's beautiful. And we kind of redid everything else.、Um, of course, the stairs and everything were redone. So then people would sleep here? or? So this is one of the sleeping rooms. And I'm sorry that all this stuff is on the side here. No, no, that's, that's fine. Because we're reconfiguring the storage area in the back. So in the very back of the garden, there's a, a storage. Uh, storage shed, kind of wall shed room, a little storage room behind that.、Mm -hmm. I love this. We went up, way up in the mountains to a, to a person who ages and creates、yeah. those Ishidoro stone lanterns. Nice. So that was, that's a very special stone lantern with the Tsukimi, tsukimi Shoji. Oh, wow. Tsukimi means moon, moon viewing. Oh, wow. Moon viewing Shoji. Tsukimi. So, you can actually have, the, have this open and still kind of experience if you're sitting on the, on the sofa thing, you can, you can still experience the, the garden from here, which is quite nice. In episode 146 of Seeking Sustainability Live, I had a chance to talk to Atsuko Mori san, who is the founder of Camilla Tea House in Kyoto, and she also talked about these beautiful half paper shoji. Which can move up or down. The two washrooms, we kind of needed to have a steep stair、uh, to accommodate that. Yeah. And then there's a second, kind of the main bath, bathroom toilet area in there. Wow, nice bedroom. So, all cherry wood beds,、yeah. and that's just a closet. The, the door. The doors are really great. Our, our builder.、Oh. Guy did a really great job making these、uh, from by hand. And they have,、um, you know, they're very, they're very cool. You know, simple, but, but I like them. Gorgeous wood. And do we have like the kids, I guess the young people's room? Uh huh. Little two, two beds、Aww. on the front side. Two twins, yeah. yeah. They're not, they're like Western size twins, aren't they? Like Western, well, they're kind of super twin or small double beds. And you're pretty tall, so. I'm pretty tall, so, so as you can see, you know, we had to work with every centimeter we had. These, 
you know, they they would say, oh, just just go this way right up. And more, 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 more. Always get the extra centimeters. But I can stand all, almost all the way through this room, and and of course, if you keep like they used to take. They used to put floating ceilings under all of these, so where that notch is, for example, so that these these traditional kind of rooms would have a notch in the wall there, where they would put a floating ceiling under these beautiful beams, um, which is ridiculous because they're pretty, and why not have that space? Um, so of course, you know, the out comes the floating ceiling, and then we get this extra kind of room that's an actual usable room. I love the exposed beams. You've got like fire extinguishers. Oh yeah, so one thing that we've done that a lot of other B&B &B or Airbnb type places didn't do is we were completely licensed and official right from the word go. Which involved a lot more paperwork, of course it involved money, it involved inspections and signs like these green exit signs which are a little annoying. But the, the, all of those things, it's important because when all the rules tightened up and changed a couple of years ago, we weren't, you know, cutting any corners or doing anything illegal, and that paid off in the end. Because a bunch of places in town that were sort of fly-by-night or just kind of so-so renovations or just slapdash, you know, subleased apartments and that kind of thing, had to really close up. So yeah, it's, I'm really happy with this place. I love it. I, sometimes I have a staycation here because I live, you know, 20 something minute bike ride from there. So sometimes me only or a couple of members of the family only come here and everybody else stays. So it's great. It's a good place to come just to have some peace and quiet. Have you had also, it pretty empty during coronavirus? Have yeah. you been able? Yeah, yeah we've, we're getting a lot of repeat visitors and, okay. and Japanese um, domestic based visitors. Um, and so that's nice, but um, this has, this place is good for families. And right across the street is one of the best um, bathhouses in town. Nice. And if you're covered in tattoos, you can go there because it's tattoo friendly. I'm not, but, but a lot of people can't go to the bathhouses in onsen unless they are uh, tattoo free. But that place is okay. And so every now and then you'll see somebody with one of the really big back pieces, traditionally uh, bamboo type style. So that's pretty interesting. But I like that place. Mm -hmm. And you have some beautiful scrolls. This, okay, our veggie lady does these. So we have a rice dealer. I think I maybe mentioned to you, you're talking about sustainable things. And so we've been getting rice from this 90 something year old woman for 20 years, since she was 70 or so. And, um, and she's, she gets all of her veggies and rice from Shiga Prefecture and then brings them, you know, they kind of come straight to her door and then she kind of, she rides, she doesn't ride anymore, she pushes a little cart around the neighborhood. She's in her 90s. And just brings stuff to us and says, here's what you're eating for dinner, pay me, <laughs> you know. So we just buy whatever she gives us, which is great. It's always in season and it comes straight from the family farms and she's our, our veggie rice dealer. But then she also throws one of these things in every now and then because this is her thing, this is her hobby. And so some of them are, are, are sayings, some of them are, um, one of them that I really like, not this one, is the words to a children's song that, that's, that's done in the shape of a peach. Um, and so she's just really neat, you know, that kind of rich. I also did an Instagram Live on my Instagram account, Inbound Ambassador. If you want to check out some more details and a walk around on the live stream through Instagram there. The quality is not great, but Mike gives more insights about the local Cento, the reason for the naming of the street that they're on, and other key details which I found really interesting. Here Mike is explaining how important it is to have English explanation for all the remote controls and all the appliances that you put into your guest house and how probably the telephone is no longer necessary. Another necessary feature for certification as a guest house is having your emergency escape route information in each room. Another nice feature is the signature 
designs that his plaster artists put in on all the walls that were done with natural plaster. I fell in love with this antique piece he had in the corner and Mike tells us that on the 25th of every month there is a fantastic antique flea market in Kyoto. Another nice design feature they added is the open kitchen. So while you're cooking or washing up, you can still interact with your friends and family. This is an antique well bucket that he had found at a market. It's a really cool old wooden piece which has been repaired, which actually makes it more interesting. Here Mike is showing how they had custom made shoji doors made at a higher height to accommodate international guests and he's demonstrating the half shoji that you can pull up to see the moon or the garden view from inside the house. Mike told me some great stories about these small Japanese style gardens at the side or back of every guest house that they renovate. These stone lanterns or the stone rock which catches water are beautiful features, very heavy, but he's able to find them in the countryside where people carve them and leave them outside to be weathered. Big thanks to Mike for giving me such a great tour of his remodeled guest houses and telling me so much of the backstory and insights on the remodel process. I learned so much. Thank you so much for watching and joining us today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you get updates on more videos like this.